Charlotte the Cook. I'm a professor in soil health and fertility at Cal Poly and a certified crop advisor. Last year, we started a project to study the effect of cover crops on uh, soil health in orchards. This uh, project includes two field trials, one out in Itna Valley and one here on our Cal Poly campus. In the field trial in Itna Valley, we have three treatments. We have the control treatment, which is the typical practice where the alleys in between the trees are left um, uh, fallow, so there's bare soil. In um, the two other treatments, we're testing different variations of cover crop management. In one of them, we have a triticale cover crop, so a non-legume cover crop. In the other one, we have that same triticale with um, an inoculation of mycorrhizae. So that's out in Enna Valley. Here at Cal Poly, we have also three treatments, but they're a little bit different. We have uh, similarly the control with the bare fallow. We have a um, treatment with the triticale, which we're standing in right now. But then the third treatment is a, a cover crop mix that includes legumes. So in that treatment, we have 10% of triticale and then a mix of three different legumes. We have fava bean, field pea, and common fetch in there. All right, so as I said, we're standing here in the uh, treatment with the triticale cover crop. And one of the things you can see here on the ground is the mulch. So the common practice um, in this orchard is to prune in fall and then mulch all these prunings and just leave them on the surface. This has been really nice for this orchard because we're on a Salina silty clay loam soil here and um, after it rains, the soil can get really muddy. The mulch helps with um, accessibility to this orchard after um, heavy rains. So we didn't really want to diskin that mulch to be able to prepare a seed bed for the cover crop. And this year we tried if we could just see that cover crop directly into this mulch. You can see that the cover crop has nicely germinated. So we're really happy to uh, be able to verify that we can uh, seed that cover crop directly into that mulch instead of having to disc it into the ground, adding that additional disturbance and uh, lowering the accessibility to the field because it gets really muddy. We're here in a different plot of the same triticale cover crop treatment and you can see that it looks a little bit different here than it did in the previous crop. What we see here is a lot uh, more dense coverage of the soil by that cover crop. And this is caused by actually uh, germination of some of the seed from last year's cover crop. So we could see in the previous plot how that cover crop was nicely growing in these straight lines, which is uh, a result of how we seeded that cover crop with a drill seeder that puts the seed in these nice lines. Here we see that the plants are much more scrambled. So that seed that was produced last year was um, basically germinating. So this is an interesting observation because it provides opportunities for growers to potentially let their cover crop pur purposefully go into seed so that you don't have to reseed and buy seed every year. Um, one thing to pay attention to though is that um, with crops that are frost sensitive you don't want your cover crop to be too tall when there's frost at night because that tall cover crop can increase the risk for frost damage. So here you see an example of a legume cover crop mix that's thriving. This is what we would hope the uh, cover crop treatment with the legumes to look like in the lemon grove. So as we continue improving soil, hopefully this is where we can get in a few years from here. So here we're standing in front of one of these newer orchards on our campus. I'm standing in front of an olive grove and you can see that the cover crop in this olive grove is doing a lot better than the cover crop out in the lemon orchard. Before this olive grove was put in, they put, uh, they had the field fallow for a little bit, but it was a green fallow. They put in a cover crop that served as a soil builder with a lot of legumes, a lot of good roots. And um, you can clearly see that when you start with better soil health, your cover crop is also going to do better. When it comes to avocados, there's definitely also opportunity to use cover crops to improve your soil health. 
When you're talking about a mature orchard with a very dense canopy, you're probably not going to be able to get a cover crop in there because there's not going to be enough light coming through the canopy for that cover crop to be able to succeed. In these mature orchards though, you get all that leaf material that comes onto the soil and this is actually a really good source to build your soil organic matter. Where the cover crops can play a role is um, in the younger orchards, where the canopy hasn't completely closed in yet. And um, here on campus, uh, we just put in this new avocado grove on a hill, and there's a cover crop growing, and that cover crop has already been uh, doing a really good job at keeping the soil in place and preventing erosion in this young orchard um, with these very heavy rains we've had a few weeks ago. We are just in our second year of this research project right now. We're collecting a lot of data on different soil properties, also on the trees. We're collecting yield data. We are in the process of analyzing all that data and we will definitely make that available to you as soon as we have it. I would love to hear from you. If you have questions about cover crops, if you have certain experiences you would like to share, if you have comments on the video, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email is popping up on the bottom of the screen. And so I am really excited to hear from you.